Hey folks, welcome back to Fresh Produce. I'm Pete from BTI. Today I want to talk about some cool new products out from Bike Yoke. Uh, some of these have been around for a little while, but we've got a new color to talk about. And I want to do a little install video so you can see some of the intricacies and details of how to get these things all on. Um, so stick around, let's get right into it. All right, so first of all, the Bike Yoke Sagma Saddle has been around for a little while. Uh, it's pretty unique because it actually has like a unique foam in there. They're calling it ID beads, but it's almost like a tennis shoe type foam in kind of these new modern tennis shoe foams uh, that everyone's racing on and <clears throat> has a lot of rebound to it, really comfortable, um, and then a pretty unique shape, really small, so you can move around on um, your bike as you're moving across the trail. I think that's really, again, kind of the popular uh, direction a lot of saddles are going. I've been on one for a while and really enjoy it. Another unique part about these saddles is the elastomer system on the bottom of the saddle. So the rails are attached to the saddle shell through an elastomer here. So it allows a little bit of rock and movement in the shell as your sit bones pressurize each side of the saddle. Now, again, this one's been around for a while, but what I wanted to talk about today is some new versions uh, of this saddle. First of all, a carbon rail version. So we're shedding a little bit of weight here. More importantly, you're gonna get a little more compliance out of that rail. So you already get a nice comfortable saddle with an elastomer to allow some side to side movement. And now we've got a carbon rail to just soak up slightly bit more, slight bit more uh, vibration. Pretty cool option if you like the Sagma or wanna try it out and want something kind of premium, that carbon rail version is a really great option. Another point to note on these is they are replaceable. So if you ever broke a carbon rail, this is one that the saddle's not just, you know, time to throw out, time to scrap it. This rail can be replaced pretty easily and the saddle will live on. So cool option there. Here's the original um, aluminum rail. It's a forged aluminum rail, another kind of unique piece. Even these aluminum rails were not round, they are an oval shape. So you do wanna make sure your uh, seat posts can handle that. All the bike yoke posts work great in that regard. Um, and then the other saddle I wanted to point out today is there's a new light version. It's a bit less expensive. You're getting the same foam on the top of the saddle. You're just losing that elastomer setup. So if you don't feel like you need that side to side tilt or rock uh, and want a more traditional rails, that's an option now. Um, Saves a little bit of weight, but more importantly, it's a bit less expensive and then just less uh, complex. Um, some folks have had a little bit of creaking on these if they get loose, easy to tighten up and throw some Loctite on to remedy, but you're not gonna have that issue with a traditional rail saddle. So we've got that option if you wanna try out the Sagma Lite in a little more simple setup. Okay, the other one I wanna talk about today uh, is the Bike Yoke Stem, this black version, uh, the Bar Keeper, has been around for a while, 35, 45, and 50 millimeters. The new option is a forged color. So this is really like a raw, the raw forge that the piece comes out of the forge in. Uh, so you can really see kind of cool, unique grain structure that's created with the forging process. And then of course it's CNC'd where it needs to be um, finished. But just super unique color and um, I'm going to be installing this 45 mil on my own bike so I thought I would run over the installation with you. Now this is a stem with that does not have a removable faceplate. There's not a whole lot of these out on the market but they are getting a little more common these days. And they do have a unique installation process so I wanted to go over that with you and hopefully take out some of the fear that might or some kind of some of the unsurety that folks might have about installing that. It's basically is machined in its kind of closed shape. So it's pretty tough to get over the bends in a bar. So you can see on this Deity high rise bar, we can't quite get it over the bend as is because it's almost closed. But Bike Yoke sends along a little plastic wedge piece and some little dummy bolts that are gonna help you open the stem up and get it installed. So right on this plastic wedge, it there's a printing that shows front and back. So we'll get the front pointed toward the front and that can just drop right in. It's set up so that it's gonna sit right between the bolts of the stem. There's a little cutout on the plastic wedge to make it fit right in the right spot. 
And then there's also a guide for max, so you can you can see uh, what your maximum spread is before it compromises the stem. Make sure you don't have to worry about that. I don't think we're gonna have to get anywhere close to it, but this uh, dummy bolt is a two and a half millimeter. So we'll just give those a few turns and kind of go back and forth. And you'll see the stem just opens right up so we can Now, at this point, we can just back those little screws out and the stem will return back to its normal position. All right, now the wedge pops out. Now these bolts definitely are not gonna work for our final uh, tensioning. So we'll remove these all the way, but that allowed us to screw them in basically past the edge of the threading there and get that little extra spread that we needed to. So that was a pretty cool that Baikyo concluded these dummy bolts. And now we can drop in the standard bolts with regular heads. And now we've got ourselves super clean fit with just two bolts on that stem face instead of the standard four. So. Pretty cool setup there. I just wanted to show you guys how to get this thing on. Hopefully it's not intimidating to too many folks. Uh, just take your time with it and make sure that you uh, get it spread out wide enough as you get it over the bar, over the bend in the bar, I should say. What's uh, another unique point about the stem is it's just ultra light because of that forged nature. Uh, the material can be ultra strong um, before it's ever CNC'd and finalized into the um, the right internal shapes. Um, so the stem has actually been tested and rated for like downhill usage a little higher than you really you would need in a regular um, steer tube mounted stem. So I think it's a really cool option, both weight and strength wise for a lot of folks and a super unique look. So check that thing out. It's the um, Bike Yoke Barkeeper. They've also got a little accessory, the aligner. It's just a headset spacer that's gonna fit right down here and it has a screw on the backside. So the idea is once you get everything set up, tensioned and aligned, you can tighten that stem spacer. And then if you ever are traveling or need to make a change in the stem, you can leave the aligner spacer tight, rotate the, the uh, stem and handlebars to fit in a box say, or a travel bag. Uh, and then once you get back to your correct location, you just rotate it back and align the gaps on the two pieces and you're gonna be back to alignment. So just a simple, unique little piece there to make things easy. Uh, also, it's gonna hold tension on your headset. So if you do need to re remove your stem for something, maybe you're you know running a new brake line or what have you and you need to take that off for some reason, this can hold that stem tension throughout the process. So pretty cool option there with just a simple little piece. Um, yeah, I think that's all I really wanted to cover. Hopefully you find this, these parts as interesting as I do and got a little info from today's video. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in these parts, make sure you check at your local bike shop and tell them BTI sent you.